Welcome to The Lex Factor, a lawfully good podcast where we'll brief you on the business of law so you can build a better practice and capture more billable hours. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of The Lex Factor. It's your host, Lauren, here. And your co-host, Brad. Woo! Thank you, thank you, thank you. Applaud for Brad, I, I thought please. I thought we weren't going to do that anymore. I, I know, thought it, it was weird. supposed to be just for the guests. It felt weird. I felt like I forgot something, and so I think we should keep doing it. You just it. always want to clap yeah, for me. Yeah, it, yeah. it feels good. It really yeah. does. It That's what builds I'm here. I am here to up. build you up. Make that co-host one day reach the host heights. Height. The height of the host. <laughs> It was too easy. I'm not going to go there. Not going to go there. Not going to go there. Um, I am actually going to let you introduce our guest today because oh you my have gosh. a special connection with them. I do have a special connection, if that's what we want to call it. <laughs> we have uh, we have two wonderful guests with us today. We have Miranda Dittman. Hello. Oh my goodness! <laughs> we have to clap. Clap. She is a security clap. expert, and ah, we're going to let her introduce expert. herself a little bit more in just a second. Okay. And we have Michelle Sternerman. Hello. Welcome. Yes, everybody. You don't, you don't have to clap for yourself. Every, we'll do the clapping. Yeah. <laughs> everybody gets a clap. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. So could we start by just one of you, uh, you know, going a little bit more detail about your background, who you are, what you find interesting? I can start. All right. Sounds good. So as they said, I'm Michelle Sternerman. I have been in IT for uh, going on 20 plus years. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. I started uh, at a help desk where I didn't even know what a network cable was. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, from... I'm laughing like I know, but, you know, go ahead. <laughs> There's not a lot of them since we've gotten to wireless now. Things have advanced okay. quite a bit since I was there. Um, I have worked my way up through leadership, managing end user and network and security teams, and uh, now most recently managing a support and infrastructure role. Very good. Very exciting. My name is Miranda Dittman. I have been dedicated to security from the start of my career. I went through a computer science degree that ended up specializing in cybersecurity, and then I continued on to my master's. Um, from there, I've worked in compliance and audit, security operations, application security. I've done engineering roles, and right now I'm our uh, senior cybersecurity specialist. So it's it's been an interesting field to progress in, and yeah. it's yeah, definitely it something that constantly it does, and it's blowing up for Lexicon. It's been awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so what Brad didn't mention is both of you guys are actually here at Lexicon. So I'd love for you to tell everybody a little bit more of what you actually do for Lexicon. Like, what are your goals for us and for our clients? So for our clients, we are focusing on secure solutions. And from the Lexicon perspective, we have two tiers of clients, right? So we have our attorneys who we support. We want to make sure that they're operating in a secure environment. And then we also have our attorneys and users, their clients that we're supporting. We want to make sure their data is protected. We want to make sure that they're confident in our ability to secure their case matter from beginning consult to um, case closure. So it's there's a lot of um, tiers. I feel like it's very secure. I feel very like that's what you're secure saying. Remember and we secure. used to do the security. Security. That's right. That was way back at that the beginning way, of the podcast. That was in our old studio. That's right. But now we're in our brand new studio, which is so nice. We can't do that here. We can't. It, it's it's a bygone. We're above that, yeah. That's right. <laughs> Again, with the short jokes. Oh. <laughs> Michelle, what about your team? So at Lexicon, I um, lead the infrastructure teams, which includes Miranda um, through security, networking, uh, the infrastructure team, as well as ServiceNow Development, and then our front line, the uh, service desk. Um, our biggest focus that we have coming up is making sure that we have standardization, uh, security, and that we are having a strong focus on the experience that we are providing to our customers. So one of the things that we're talking about today is looking back over the year at the pandemic and how things have changed. So I'm feeling pretty good about it. I feel like vaccines are rolling out. I feel like people are getting them. There's talking more about the herd immunity, mm -hmm. which kind of makes me feel weird calling it that. But hey, you're you part know, of a herd. I am. You're I'm part, part of, of the herd. human herd. That's what I feel like. But how have things changed, you know, over the course of this year from a security perspective, from an IT perspective? There's been a lot of advancements. It's just been a really crazy time, especially for law firms. 
Yeah. And I think, like Brad said, it's pretty much been a year at this point, and we've all gotten used to it. We've grown a lot. Um, and I think because of where we are, like Brad said, with the vaccines, heard. I almost said herd community. <laughs> herd immunity, it's about to change again. That's you right. You know, and maybe it's going to revert back a little bit. Maybe there's going to be more of a hybrid or maybe it's just going to keep changing. So, yeah, would love just to pick your guys' brain. Like, what have you seen change over the past year and what do you think is going to happen over the next couple months? I think from a, an IT perspective, especially from um, a support level, the I think that COVID has brought on a lot of um, forced flexibility. I think there was a lot of companies that well, didn't want to look at look into work from home or work from anywhere. There's a lot of questions that came into that. Do we provide them equipment? How do we make sure they're doing their job? Um, so I think with COVID coming in, a lot of that was was forced. And I think from a technology perspective, there is a lot of um, a lot of knowledge that has been uh, determined that it is that flexibility is there that we still can provide that service and uh, take take uh, advantage of the technology releases. Yeah, and I feel like it's going to be hard to go back. You know, all these these employees have expectations now. Okay, I've been able to work from home for the past year. Um, hey, my work bought me a new laptop or a new monitor, and then all of a sudden one day they expect me to go back into the office. That's going to be hard to uh, deal with, I think, from an employer standpoint. Oh yeah, I, I can definitely see that. Yeah, I think that there will continue to be that flexibility, but I also see a little bit of burnout. People miss that human interaction, that contact. Oh, yeah. um, it's difficult when sitting in a, a Zoom or team meeting to try to read the room or, or, or you know, through uh, a team's messages, trying to pick up on that tone or what you're really trying to, to yeah. get accomplished. Yeah. Body language. Eye contact. Yeah. All of those things. <laughs> From a security perspective, I bet that kind of scared the living bejeebies <laughs> out of you, for it lack did. of a better way to Is that a technical term? It is. It is. Bejeebies? Bejeebies. Okay. I couldn't think of the, the – uh, I didn't want to cuss on the, you know, on the podcast like the you did. Poo. Like I you did, did not, the other week. So. I didn't do, I think they edited that out. Yeah, we, you hit told the, everybody. we hit the dump button for uh. you. We, we have that button quite frequently. <laughs> For you, but I'm sure from a security perspective, you know, advancements in technology are scary because everybody, you know, jumps in. And in the case of a pandemic, they were eager to work from home, had to work from home, but then they forget about security. So how did this last year impact you, Miranda? It did impact security. So we went from a we went from an environment where any technical change was brought on with design and planning. And when it comes to security, it's rigorous design and planning. There's a lot of conversations being held in the background. And, you know, you make sure to check all of your boxes. But when we went from one week in the beginning of March last year where everybody was in office and we were collaborating in person and, you know, going through those plans and checklists to the following week where we had to implement virtual support, we had to make sure everything was available and we had to really dive into technology upgrading and innovation, we we were forced to bypass some of that a little bit in the field. And so it was scary for sure. And there was an increase in risk that was seen by every sector in the industry. What really came into play, though, was not just the need for cybersecurity to increase as an industry, but cybercrime increased as an industry too. So there were both factors coming into play. And not only did that affect the enterprise so to speak, but it also affected everybody working from home because suddenly your home became your office. And while a lot of people were used to that, it, it wasn't necessarily a broad thing at that point. Mm -hmm. So throughout the last year, we had a huge increase in people working from home and relying on home internet, home security. Home antivirus, everything yes. like that. Yes. Nor Norton. Norton. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That still exists. You, you put in your CD-ROM okay. and it... CD-ROM, wow. <laughs> so a lot has changed for Lauren over the last year from I'm pandemic joking. perspective. I'm joking. I am joking. <laughs> She's going to spin up her mixtape here in a second. Break out the My floppy. My boombox, yeah. <laughs> Definitely changed. I feel judged. But that is scary. I mean, in, still we're seeing a huge increase in the uh, amount of cyber attacks. I mean, we saw the SolarWinds attack just recently. We saw the Microsoft zero day for exchange. So many different things are still happening. It's it's not going away. It's really scary. So, you know, what are there extra precautions that people should be putting in place? Are there extra things? Uh, have you seen that, uh, 
you know, across the industry, people paying more attention to security? Is that a positive that maybe came out of the pandemic? Yeah. So I think previously there was a lot of focus on network control. There was a lot of um, need for visibility of the network. We were looking at traffic coming in and out of the environment, and we were making sure that things were, there were controls in place identifying anomalies. We were understanding what a normal behavior looked like, but as of March 2020, normal behavior changed. So we lost some of that heuristic capability, and we had to redefine what was normal for the whole workforce. And um, I think Apart from network security, we had to put a huge focus on endpoint security. People were bringing their devices home and working from home on external networks. So endpoint protection became huge, antivirus like we were just talking about, but also awareness. So training initiatives are huge and just making sure that your your, um, employees are armed with the knowledge to bring some of those controls home. They are looking for things that are not normal and they're identifying things that they can put into place at home, but also identifying things that are introducing risk. To tie that into, uh, Miranda had mentioned that we had to rush through or take shortcuts on some of the items. You know, t- to her point, there was a lot of um, employees who hadn't worked from home or um, had never connected remotely through the VPN. And so there was rolling out a lot of software quickly, um, making a lot of applications available And one of the things that um, was important to tie into that was that security um, education piece of it so that people could take that step back and and really realize the part that they play um, to protect their their company. Yeah. And and Brad said something that sparked something in my head. He was talking about the positives that came out of this. And so I know uh, uh, (laughs) Brad... The positives. The positives. Um, So from an IT standpoint, I think like you guys mentioned earlier, we were forced to grow over the past year. So as much as COVID has been an unfortunate thing, from an IT perspective, what do you guys feel like some of the positives are from an IT perspective that have come out of COVID? I think the biggest thing is that um, companies realized um, that that flexibility is there. I think there's cost savings that has come into play from um, actual physical space. Um, I think that there has been more, um, especially in the beginning, I think there was more communication that happened because it was unique and you weren't used to coming in and having that face-to-face meeting. So people were reaching out more um, to try to make that connection. Um, I think those things all um, played a part in, in being successful in the last year. Before we move over to security, you know, one of the things, Michelle, that you've always been a big advocate of is that kind of that home experience at work. Well, now they're at home having that work experience. Do you think it helped, uh, you know, kind of grow that understanding of IT to make things easier to work with, uh, more of a customer experience focus? Do you think that it moved that along? I did. I do think it helped a lot. Um, one of the biggest focuses, especially from um, an, an infrastructure and support perspective, was to have a common experience no matter where you're connecting from. Um, when we were all in the office 40 plus hours a week, um, that's plus. Yeah. <laughs> Who, who's your boss? <laughs> Is it Brad? <laughs> I think that, uh, you know, sometimes that's hard to understand um, from an um, employee perspective because you're not connecting remotely. But now that it's you who needs to be able to do your job from any place, it makes a big difference on, on your focus on where you should be uh, looking to make sure that that's common. What do you think from a security perspective? Positives? Well, that's a really good point. So since everybody was working from home, there was that running joke that, you know, COVID brought to you by Zoom or WebEx or Teams, you know. <laughs> oh my God, what if it was? That's that's a conspiracy theory. We that don't would... we don't cover that on this podcast. That's the next podcast. <laughs> Karen covers that one. Yes. <laughs> so there was a lot of um, focus on again that user experience, and so we were looking at new applications and a bigger spectrum of communication support. And so I feel like the appreciation of IT just went through the roof when this happened. And the reliance on IT also went through the roof. Everything became more collaborative. You were you were more likely to call your help desk and work through an issue to make sure that your daily experience was still viable to get your job done for the day. Mm-hmm. People started relying on IT more, and there was definitely an increase in appreciation for IT. 
And as people shared more information and there was more reliance on confidentiality and integrity of data in the environment, there was a huge appreciation of security. So whereas security might have been an independent team in many organizations before, it's now something that is part is able to partner with departments throughout the organization. And you're seeing a lot more collaboration with the end user, with your other IT departments, and even with your non-technical departments. So there's definitely been positive coming out of this for IT and security. Yeah. I really think any company that thought security is kind of an afterthought after the pandemic is it's a necessity. They learn their lesson. They learn their lesson. Unfortunately. Yes, unfortunately, but it's positive overall. Yeah, because we're all going to be better coming out of it. That's right. You took the words right out of my mouth. Oh, sorry. That's okay. It happens a lot. Yeah. But what about on the flip side, though? So we mentioned earlier things are looking a little bit more positive on the horizon. Is there something that's still kind of like keeping you guys up at night, knowing that we've gotten so comfortable over the past year, we figured things out, um, and now things are going to change again? What are your biggest concerns over the next couple of months? Um, I think for me, it's those things that are out of our control still. Um, We have uh, companies that are are still, you know, short on staff. Um, Travel's been... Uh, slowed. So there's things like asset deliveries and things that are out of our control that if we have a new hire starting in two weeks and it's a six-week delivery, you know, how are we preparing for those type of things? I also think some of the, and Miranda can can expand on this, but I for me, it's still that education piece. People who work from home um, who aren't used to it, there's a lot of pieces that go into that from a support perspective. Are we prepared for that? Um, can we support the applications, the issues? Uh, you know, it can be Aunt Sally's 1970 dot matrix <laughs> printer. Um, Her that, CD-ROM. <laughs> that has never, you know, has never come into play, but now that's what, you know, they have. You know, mm-hmm. where does that support lie? Yeah. Mine, I think, directly comes out of the positive. So now that people are working more closely with me, they're bringing issues to my attention. They're forwarding more phishing attempts. They're bringing gaps to, you know, my attention. There, There's a lot more coming across my desk. So the good also um, keeps me up at night. It's <laughs> I'm, I'm seeing a lot more things that I can fix. It's just that I would love to fix them now and not tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, phishing. I mean, anytime something goes on, phishing is a huge risk. So when it comes to COVID, you're going to see spear phishing that's tailored to your end users. There's going to be mention of vaccines while people are hyper-focused. There's going to be mention of stimulus benefits. There's, I mean, we also had an election year in the middle Mm -hmm. of this. So phishing just went Mm -hmm. crazy in the last year. Yeah. We've been seeing so much, not just phishing, but uh, we've talked on the, on previous shows about deep fakes coming out. There was a recent article about a lady that did one to you know, make sure her daughter received the head cheerleading award. Mm. So she published a deep fake for her competition. I mean, it's all over the place. So it's it's getting very scary. And, you know, the bad actors are targeting even large companies like what we mentioned before, Microsoft and SolarWinds. It's just crazy, you know, how much they're spending into collecting this information that's out there. I'm sure that keeps you up at night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fix that, Miranda. Yeah. All of it right now. My mind right that, now, like, not tomorrow. Everyday person can do that stuff. Right. Like it's someone's very scary. mom who has a high school daughter who cheerleads. Like mm-hmm. just your everyday mom. Right. Figured it out. Technology. It's, yeah. it's and now out there. We have people who are working from home, so it's saving drive time. No, they have so now more they have time, time to, to make the deep. <laughs> they have more time yeah. for that deep sea fishing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, I like that. That's deep not. Sea. That's that not actually a term. <laughs> I made it up. No, that's like fishing, but Quite like it. excessive fishing. Really? Yeah. Okay. No. Yeah. No. I agree. <gasps> I, no. The experts <laughs> agree <laughs> with Lauren. Start using You're done, it. Brad. I am CIO over here. <laughs> I think um, the one of the most positives is something Miranda touched on was that um, security is no longer a standalone. Um, all of the organizations and departments are seeing that in everything that they do day to day, that security has a place. Mm -hmm. You're seeing it come up in uh, project plans, uh, software application uh, implementations, new hire uh, orientations. It's it's nice to see that 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 partnership is happening. Yeah. 
And you brought up, Miranda, you brought up fishing. So, and not that this is the focus of today's episode, but you could, I think it would be beneficial if you give our listeners a few tips on how to identify a fish, especially since there's there's probably going to be a lot coming. There's tax time coming up. You mentioned the stimulus, vaccines. How do you know when you're getting a fishing attempt and what should you do? So a lot of fishing comes from the idea of normal behavior. So we were talking about that before where you have to be responsible enough to identify anomalies. So if you see something that looks like it's internal, but it's coming from an external email, if you see something that is from your CEO, but you have never worked directly with your CEO before, things like that, that are, I want to say the easier red flags to identify. They're things that have always been communicated, but now that everybody is working from home, they're also having to differentiate between their personal email addresses and their work email addresses. And, Mm -hmm. you know, you're working with so many more people directly while working from home to get things done. You're not in a meeting room. So you have a lot more one-on-one communication over your email or IM or whatever platform you're using. So not only should you be looking at those fields, you know, your your sender, your Mm -hmm. reply to field, if that's separate, your signatures, things like that. But you need to pay attention to the content as well. Is it something that you should be talking about with a a peer at work. I mean, are you going to talk to your HR representative about a vaccine? Probably not in most cases. And so just because you're familiar with the name, maybe you're familiar with the address domain, or maybe you're familiar with the content, if Mm -hmm. all three don't add up, then those are really big things to watch for. Yeah. And so what if what if you're a small firm, you know, maybe you're a solo attorney or you have a couple people at your firm and you don't have a corporate IT department. What do you do when you when you start getting these phishing emails or when you accidentally click or or share something that doesn't seem seem accurate? When phishing is reported to a bigger firm, you're going to have those capabilities for investigation. A small firm might not have that capability, but they can still block. They know whether or not it's it's a sender that they trust or a source that they trust. And so they still have the capability to ignore and block. Don't click on the links. Don't open the attachments and just file away in your deleted folders. Sometimes um, even in bigger firms, when employees forward their phishing on to a security entity for investigation, they'll forget to delete out of their deleted folders. They'll forget to mm, delete out of their, out of their sent, sent folders. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then... You know, before you know it, they've forwarded phishing, not only to the right entity, which is security, but they might have CC'd a manager or, you know, gone through improper measures. So it's just really what it comes down to, big and large firm, is being aware of yourself and what you're doing. You know, as companies take into account this new transition of people working from home, realizing that they can outsource to other companies, outsource to security like yourself, Miranda, or to other IT companies. Uh, entities like Michelle, what you're doing, um, what what are some things that they should take into consideration when picking that partner for who they need to work with to outsource? I love that question because <laughs> when you are working from an enterprise level, your attack surface expands every time you onboard a new client, every time you work with a new person, whether you're bringing in a new hire or you're bringing in a new client, like I said. Mm-hmm. When you pick vendors, you're also expanding your attack surface. So you have to make sure that your vendor is going to be as diligent as you. It, it can be even something as simple as putting a checklist in place. You know, it takes five minutes to check a box and say whether or not you have a process in place. And when you have a security team dedicated to those checks, then you can rely on those people as mm-hmm. a partner to investigate whether or not it's a good move. And so Microsoft being a great example, you really cannot avoid issues occurring within Microsoft. But that vendor, when they come to you notifying you of an issue that they've experienced, they come to you with IOCs that you can check to validate whether or not you are impacted. They tell you how to mitigate uh, indicators of compromise. So they'll come to you and tell you what to check for. And they'll, you know, provide mitigating controls. They provide a patch. There was a, Mm -hmm. there was a big patch from Microsoft after that, that um, issue went public And they check in. You know, usually you have an account manager that's relaying all this information to you before it goes to the outside world, before Mm -hmm. it goes to non-Microsoft entities. If you partner with a vendor who is not as prepared or doesn't have as much experience managing incident response, you run the risk of, 
you know, going several days, weeks, months without even knowing that you're mm-hmm. compromised or impacted by their compromise. And then you also run the risk of being contacted, you know, somebody saying, hey, you're impacted, but this is in your hands and we don't have any support for you. We're too busy taking care of ourselves right now. So it's it really comes down to partnership and making sure that their security capability is as diligent as yours. Right. I think the partnership is huge. Making sure if, if you're going to be partnering with um, another company, you need to look at what are their what are their standard operating procedures? What communication plans do they have in place? Are there SLAs and metrics to go with that? And do they really believe in that level of support or what you're looking for? If you are, um, you know, if you're expecting certain um, monitoring and the communications that go with that, you you need to align with companies that are going to be able to provide that for you. There's a, a, a really great idea that's taught in cyber studies a lot of times that you can transfer services, you can partner with a vendor, but you can never transfer risk. So as soon as you transfer services, a lot of times you are doubling your mm-hmm. risk. I think one thing that uh, comes to light is it's important to you know, partner with somebody you can trust that have those things. And one thing about Lexicon is we're not just a software entity, but we're also a services entity that has a dedicated IT, dedicated security team, everything that we need to do to make sure that that risk is reduced when you do partner with us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a nice plug. I Thank like you. it. Very natural. It was it? Yeah. Miranda, one of the things that I was thinking about was just how cybercrime and cybersecurity, you know, kind of all of that together has really increased during the pandemic. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah. So the need has definitely increased. Cybercrime is found to increase from an economy perspective. Um, a recent study came out that stated that cybercrime is now the third largest economy behind the U.S. and China. So when you're looking at national economies, the fact that cybercrime has made it into that third slot above the illegal drug mm-hmm. market is what it is. And it's just it it really highlights the need for security and security personnel. Yeah. There's so much money to be made through it. It's just it's unreal. I mean, they're buying businesses. They're doing all kinds of things to, you know, collect that information and sell it. It's it's really scary, to be honest. I'm glad we have you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I'm glad to be too. here. <clears throat> and going back to that attack surface comment, um, even our targets in the industry have increased. So now you're looking at people who are filing unemployment. You're looking at elementary age kids who are now virtual and working online. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. That's true. You always had those virtual institutions for college, but everything from pre-kindergarten up through 12th grade are now utilizing the internet heavily. So the the cyber target for cybercrime has even increased, and it's a scary reality for not just enterprises, but parents and families too. Right. Yeah. It has to be, you have to be mindful just to be a good parent, to make sure your kids, you know, aren't giving information away or on their online schooling or the games that they play. That's such a good point. Since we do have these, these experts on staff for our listeners today, if you could say like five or six things that they really should be doing from an IT standpoint, um, with everything we've learned in the past year, what are like the five must do things they need to be doing to be safe at their firm? Must be doing, doing things. Yeah. Yeah, doing, must be doing. I think one of the first things is education. Mm -hmm. Um, Make sure you understand uh, what is out there. Um, Understand what is a norm Mm -hmm. from from your day-to-day and anything that's not a standard or something that might be a little bit off. You know, take the time to investigate that. Another huge part is to make sure that your applications and your network are are patched and updated. Make sure you understand what that means. Um, If you're going through another provider, I would specifically ask those questions. Also, from an education perspective, like Miranda had talked on, phishing is is crazy right now. And, you know, don't give out your password and your your login ID. Social security. Social security. Don't share any uh, personal information. You know, Microsoft's not going to... you grew up on. (laughs) Microsoft's not going to call you and ask you for your social security number or your login. You know, keep those things in mind. um, And and like I said, raise a red flag if something seems off. I think bridging from that too, visibility is so important. So just make sure that you're keeping an eye out as the end user, but also partner with your IT staff to make sure that you know, they have the capability to keep an eye out. If you're working on your cell phone and you are saving documents, it's probably not the best place to be saving things when 
your IT organization offers secure storage or secure file share, things like that. Um, regarding visibility, you know, like I said, there's there are network monitors, there are endpoint monitors. Just make sure that you're using the right platforms to do your job. Mm-hmm. I think understanding what those um, options are too, what's available, and make sure that you're asking those questions to make sure you're using them. So it really comes down to communication, talking about it. Okay to have the hard conversations about security. Nobody wants to talk about it, but it's yeah. important to talk about it. Change your password. Have that talk yeah. with the, the, the <laughs> with your staff. Yeah, I do think that a small thing is that um, hackers are, are they have a lot of time. They're I call them rude. This is their full time job, uh, right? You know, I, I say some of them are just downright <laughs> rude. Um, they have the capabilities to do a lot of things that was spoofed to make things look real. So something as small as actually picking up the phone and calling the person instead of responding back to the email mm-hmm. and saying, mm-hmm. hey, is this you? Because if it's the bad person, they can say, yeah, hey, it's me. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead and click True. on it. So something as small as just picking up the phone and talking to that person and saying, you know, hey, is this you? Yeah. You can start the chain. To That's a good point. It needs to go. Yeah. I'm going to jumble up too, but I'm going to go back to a point that Michelle made when remembering not to share social security number and password and things like that. It's also important to remember that something that might be a little bit more public, like an email address or a username, is still considered really sensitive when paired with even your first name or mm-hmm. your phone number or something like that. If you think about recovery tactics, if you forget your password, you need something as simple as a phone number if it's tied to a phone number or another email if it's tied to another email. So the more personal data points that are combined, the more sensitive it gets. So the less you share on in your email or on social media, even LinkedIn, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the better. That makes sense. You mean I shouldn't answer that? You know, what are the top 20 like things? Like the 40, the, yeah, 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 yeah. Who is your first boyfriend? What street did you grow up what, on? What's your favorite It's just food? a survey. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand the problem just with just collect it. Mark Zuckerberg it's, is just collecting your it's data, It's no big Michelle. deal. They're not doing anything. <laughs> your I security question just so happens to be, right. what was your high school mascot? Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think I speak for Brad, too. It was a pleasure having you guys on today. I'm definitely no IT expert, so I learned a lot, and I'm sure our listeners learned a lot, too. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of The Lex Factor, and we'll talk to you next time. Talk to you later. Thanks for tuning in to The Lex Factor. Lexicon takes care of business so you can take care of law. Learn how to build a better practice at lexiconservices.com.